Welcome to bar class. We are going to be using lots of techniques and exercises just like dancers do to achieve a long, beautiful, strong body, to achieve strength, upper body strength, core strength, beautiful posture, and of course, grace. We'll be taking some of the exercises from our bar class, just as a ballet bar class uses them at the opening, but also as has become popular in the last decade in gym style bar classes, we are going to work on upper body and core. You're going to need some light weights, but it doesn't matter if you don't have weights like we have at the gym, just grab some water bottles or your shampoo and conditioner, something that would weigh about one to two pounds. We're going to get started with a warm up. Go to upper body strength with some weights, go to core exercises, then we'll hit the bar and we'll end up on the floor for abs, glutes, and stretching. Hey, let's get started. Let's start with that deep breath in. Now, remember, when you are taking this deep breath in, what we're thinking about is keeping the shoulders down as well as getting taller. All right, that right arm is going to come over, but you know the bowl of the pelvis, it stays square. In other words, we are not sticking one hip out to the side and bowing over. We're really stretching from the waist. Now let's take that right leg back, stay low. Deep breath in as your leg goes back. Now try to keep that back leg parallel because we're trying to stretch out the hip sockets, the calf, the Achilles. Here we go a little faster. Staying low like you have a, uh, a glass of water on your head low and balanced. We're gonna take it to the side, so just bend one knee as you come over and you come to a flat back as much as possible. Now, if you'd like to, you can take the arms out with you. There's one more time. Now, just step out to the side a little quicker and we're gonna take your arm with you. It's kind of like a windshield wiper, just comes up and over. There's four more like that. Now we're gonna press the tummy in, shoulders down, ready to go to the other side. So we're just taking a little step out to the side. Keeping the abs tight, keeping the ears over the shoulders. All right, let's step out to the side, right side. So you're just gonna step and then come behind. At the same time, if you like, we'll add an arm. It's just a little lunge behind with a little bit of turnout. Back to the center, up and down we go. So it's just like the beginning, only now a little quicker. One arm than the other, just like the beginning, just a little quicker. All right, down and out we go. So the stretch comes to the side. And what we're trying to do is get lifted and tall as we press the arms back. There's one more after this, and then we're gonna hold that leg out, so hold it. As tall as you can, here we go with a lift. Now we wanna stay straight up and down. Here we go for the other side. Straight up and down, so we're not tick-tocking. Feet together to passe. So a passe, is a little balance. You can see I'm bringing my foot straight to my knee. So there's a connection, foot connection to the leg in a passe. Take a step and just point out in front. Shoulders are down for this. Tummy is still up. All right, we're gonna add some arms. So we go step, push. Heel of the hand pushes out. It kind of have that little swan-like look, right? Let's take it out to the side, pushing through the heel of the hand as we keep the legs going. Now take it down. You're gonna to start to feel a little bit of warmth in those triceps in particular. Now keep the legs going. I'm gonna to turn to show you. We're gonna use the triceps with a little pushback. So you lean a tiny bit forward 
and push back in the triceps. Elbows straight behind you. Now arms to the top. And we start just a little tiny twist, twist. Get ready to lift that knee up. And as we do, the arm crosses over, thus the little twist, twist. Tummy is tight, ears are over your shoulders. Now here's the leg to the front, right? Now we take it a little bit to the back. So you tap behind as that toe comes up. Now if it doesn't feel good to bend your knee that much, you can always just take a little step tap. But we're taking it with a little side windmill. Back to the front. Let's take both arms now and hold them still up in the top. Ready? Here we go. Arms are going to come out to the side as we go. Now, we're going to take the leg a little bit to the side. So I'm actually making like a V. Not the side side, but a V to my front. Just opening up the hip a little bit. Now close it in. Arms up with a deep breath. We're gonna step out to the sides. Come on down. One shoulder in, knees are straight ahead. Other side. Back to the center, everything up. That was our warm up, so grab your light weights. We're gonna work on biceps first, the front of the arms. So here we go. We're just gonna take those light weights up and down, trying for full range of motion. Now one leg back. Okay, here we go, up and down. Now these light weights, because they're light, we can move a little quick like this. Get ready because when the weights go down, we're going to passe again, but stay low. Here we go, passe. So I'm standing on a bent plie on my standing leg as that passe comes up and down. Four more, and three. You get ready for a little balance. Hold that passe as we just take tiny, tinies, little tiny lifts. Now, change the weight so they're hanging down. This is called a hammer curl. If you don't want to balance, just put that foot on the floor. It's okay. Ready to squat to the side and then come to passe. So here we go. It's just a little tiny squat to the side. Legs open a little bit in a parallel position. Four more, and three, and two, and one. Hold it right there, shoulders roll back, and back. Two more. We're gonna get ready for the other side. Palms are up now, right in the middle. Now I wanna point out that the weights, you've got your elbows really into the waist. So we're not swinging the weights at all, they're in the waist. Let's take that lunge back. Just four more right there. Elbows into the waist. Now when the weights go down, your knee goes up. Ready, here we go. So, there's up. I'm standing on a plie leg. Remember that feeling of the water, on a glass of water on top of your head? So we really want to maintain that grace and balance. Hold it there. Here's the little tinies. Well, we balance. You can put your foot down if you wanted, or balance. Now change the weights. Here we go with that squat. Elbows right there in the waist and they don't come out because we really want to just use the bicep. Another set. Hold it right there. Little shoulder rolls and rolls. Two more. Let's bend down, put the weights down. Now start a little step tap. So as we stretch, we're gonna take the arm across. We're just keeping a little circulation going. Other side, arm comes across. We're gonna pick up the weights again. This time we're moving on to triceps. All right, deep breath in. And out, let's move on to triceps. Now for triceps, this part of your arm underneath, also known as the bat wings, 
I'm gonna turn sideways so you can see a little better. Legs are parallel. We're gonna put the weights right there in your hips. Now I call this guns in the holster and we never want them to come forward of the holster. Let's start some arms, tricep kickbacks. Here we go for eight, seven. Now the tummy is lifted, of course. There's four more like that. But if you want to, on the next set, take your weight a little bit forward and release that back foot up in a teeny tiny parallel arabesque. Tummy is up. If you don't want the little arabesque, that's fine. You could just stay in the lunge. Now stay in that arabesque if you like, or go back to the lunge for the next part where we take the palms to the ceiling and start to lift them up. Tummy is still tight, <laughs> pressing in, ears over the shoulders. Now the weights come towards each other, so I'll turn a little bit so you can see. See how they come towards each other? Another set. There's four and three. Now the feet are gonna come together. Bend your knees, tuck your pelvis under, elbows, they hug your head. And here we go, it goes up. Now there is weight behind you, right? So you really don't wanna stick out that booty. We want it tucked under. So there's not a lot of weight behind us besides the weights. And bring it down. We're ready for the other side. So I'm gonna turn just so you can see a little better. Knees are bent. We're in a parallel lunge. So we're stretching out that Achilles tendon at the same time. No shoulders are down, head is up as we take it back. The elbows stay exactly in the same place. In other words, we are not swinging. Here's four more here until we change, if you want to, into that tiny little parallel arabesque. If you want, shift your weight forward toe releases. Now you could stay here for the rest of the triceps if you like. Or you could come back down into your lunge for the next set. So if you're in your lunge or in the arabesque, doesn't matter. We're going to just lift up in the back. Now, if you feel this in your neck, I want you to stop or do it without the weights. We just want to feel it in the triceps and the arms, not in the neck. And from there, hold it there. Squeeze those weights towards each other like this. So they're coming towards each other. Remember, if you feel it in your neck, time to stop and rest. We're going to put the feet together. Now from here, remember that little tuck under because we're gonna have weight behind you, right? So we wanna tuck under a little bit. And now we're going on a double time with those weights. See how the ears, the um, elbows are hugging towards the ears. In other words, not out here. Another set. There's four more and three. Now, just like before, we're gonna put the weights down, bend your knees first, step and tap. And this time we'll go into a little tricep stretch. Keep the tailbone down, keep the tummy up. So we just keep moving through our stretches. Four, three, two, and one. Inhale it up and we are ready to move on to the core. Now we all know that one of the best places to gain core strength and stability is in the plank. But maybe the plank is not for you yet. If not, I'll just have a little video up in the corner where you can be against a wall or maybe against your kitchen counter or your desk, something that's not gonna move or scoot. And you can work your way through the sequences so that when you're ready to go down to the full plank, you can, but I will give you this modification of being against a wall or a desk or a counter. Now, of course, if you have a mat and you want to roll it out for this next part, because we're going down, please be my guest. I'm just going to stay right here on the floor as I roll down and walk it out to my plank. 
Now in the plank, we want to make sure your tummy is pulled up. You're pushing away from the floor with your arms. Your tailbone is pulled down. So you are not in the shape of a hammock. You know what I mean for your body, but you are like a plank of wood. We want the ears to always stay over the shoulders. We're just holding this plank, tummy is up. Now your heels are reaching toward the floor in the back and your head is reaching toward that wall out there. Come down to your knees anytime. We can work up to all these sequences. We're gonna start a little mountain climber. Now you'll notice that when I started lifting my knees up like this, I didn't come up with my booty, but we wanna stay in that plank the whole time. In between the shoulder blades, it is not sinking into a valley, but it's staying nice and straight. Nice flat back in between the shoulder blades. Now for a little break, we're gonna come down, turn your toes under, stretch into a plank, just for a sec. Back out to the plank. We're going into that tiny little parallel arabesque. One foot releases, here we go, lift. Now while that leg is lifting, the body isn't moving at all. And that ensures that we are coming just from the glute. Another set there, and we're gonna change sides. Ready, here we go, changing sides. Keep that tummy lifted, ears over the shoulders. I know, it's hard on the arms. <laughs> Almost there, take a break whenever you need to. You can always work your way up or come back in. Here comes our little break. Knees down, toes under, stretching out your back. Coming back to the plank, tummy is up. Now we're gonna take the leg out to the side, side to side taps. Here we go, starting on the right, it goes out and in, other side, out. Now we are really working for stability of the torso, which means you are not wagging your tail. Everything in the plank stays super stable. Now pull the abs in. Another set. Everything's super stable. Knees on the floor. We're gonna pull it away, take a break. Now, if you want to, we will go into a set of tricep push-ups. So here we go. I'm gonna have my knees down. We don't wanna be back here, but pull it all the way through and we come slowly down and up. So let's just do a set of eight. There's five. And seven and eight. From there, toes tuck under into your plank, downward facing dog. A little bit of a walk, walk. Knees are gonna bend as you step forward. Keep the knees bent, roll your way up. Let's take a deep breath in. And we are ready for our bar segment. Now bar segment in a class, like a ballet class, you're holding onto the bar, which of course we don't probably have in our houses. So grab a chair. Now in the bar segment, and this is so true, it's taken from the ballet class. In a bar segment, it's not just the exercises you do, the way that they look can be copied easily, but it is what is behind those exercises. And that is called your technique that really gets you the results. So in plies, I would say 95 times out of 100, that is the very first exercise you're going to be doing at a bar in a ballet class and for a good reason. So we're gonna start in second position, which is your feet out like this. Now in second, if you look where my armpit is, my heel is right about lined up so that when I go down, this makes a straight line instead of like this or like this. We want to come on down and a straight line from the knee to the ankle pretty much. The pelvis is the place where you are going to make the biggest difference in what happens to your body during these exercises. So I would like you to think about your pelvis like a bowl. 
and the bowl is going to stay level. We're not going to tip anything out of the front of the bowl or out of the back of the bowl, but that bowl stays level. It doesn't tip around. Now, in order to keep that bowl level, you need a lot of core strength. Believe me, all my years of ballet, we never went down and did planks. We got our core strength from what was happening in the pelvis, in the glutes, in the core. So as you are coming down into your plie, everything else lifts up, the abs press back, the glutes rotate, the tailbone is down, and that is the musculature, that is the work that gets you the results, not just bending your knees and looking like it's a plie. Now, on the way down, I'd like you to think of this. Somebody has a knee over here and they're pulling it this way. Somebody has it over here pulling it this way and I'm trying to stay lifted. So as you go down in your plie, you are actually lifting, 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 using all of the musculature in here to keep that pelvic bowl stable. Now, once you get down to here, push down in the ball of your feet and that is what pushes you up. So the plie is about going out and up not really about going down. We want to keep the weight out of the knees by pressing the thighs back as much as you can. I'll keep reminding you. Let's go with our plies. Now, as we plie and up, that arm just slightly floats out. But we're thinking so much about those principles that that is where most of the work is in your head. Keep your arm out there now. We're gonna play and releve. Releve just means go up on your tiptoes. Arm circles around. Now remember I said push down on the ball of your foot, push down, that's what takes you up. Push down the ball of your foot. Are you holding that level pelvis? It takes abs in the front to press in. Now open it up and hold it there. Heels are gonna tap down, down. So it goes down, down, stay up. Down, down, stay up. So it goes tap, tap, and lift. Tap, tap, pull the tailbone down, pull the tummy up, press that shoulder down. I know you're gonna start feeling it. You wanna be rotated from the hips. Down, down, and up. Stay right there and open. Now, if this bothers your knees, just don't even do it. Press back into the thighs. If this bothers your knees, put your heels down and just press back into the thighs. We're not going down into grand plie. This is called demi plie. It's a short plie. If you like, you go a little bit up, down, up, down only if you want. If it bothers your knees at all, put your heels down and just press the thighs back. Let's put the heels down and stretch. This is called a porta bra over. Everything comes over and holds it. Everything rolls up one vertebra at a time. That arm goes to the side. And we're gonna stretch towards our bar, back to the center, and away. Ready for the other side? I'm gonna change my chair. Let's start our demi plies. So in a bar class, Whatever you do on one side, you change hands on the bar and do it on the other side. So it's actually like doing two sets. One more time. Now keep your arm out there. Here comes our plie and releve. Now we are doing demi plies, like I said. Plie up to tiptoes, releve. On those demi plies, we don't want to go down too far to a grand plie because what we're really thinking about is pressing the thighs back and pulling the torso long and up, pulling the knees out. So we're never really thinking about going down, stay up there. Pull the tailbone down, tummy up. Here we go for the taps, tap, tap, stay up. Now the ears are over the shoulders. The tummy is in, the ribs are down. The tailbone is down. The legs are rotated from the glutes. Shoulder blade is down in your back. All those things are really what's going on. Down, down, stay up. Now press the thighs back, press them back hard and hold. This is an isometric. So we're not going down far. 
but we are lifting the torso. We're pulling the tailbone down. We're pushing the thighs back as much and hard as you can. Just push, put your heels down if you want. Or you can stay in releve with me as we just go eight. You know, if you do them correctly with beautiful form, you don't have to do that many of them. Good, put the heels down. Come on up, port de bras over for a stretch. Roll it up. Now one hand, we're gonna go toward the bar and you will notice on bar exercises, let's go the other way, that everything is followed with a stretch. Now we're gonna do a bit longer stretch as we turn towards our bar and hold, just hold that parallel lunge changing sides just hold that lunge to the center our next sequence is called tendu and degage now just like when you are at the gym and you are lifting weights this is just like that except the weights that you're lifting are your own body parts so tendu and degage are designed to build strength and length we're gonna start in this position, which is first position. So we already know second position, legs apart. First position is the feet together. Now I want you to look at first position where my first position really is. There's a misconception that your feet have to go all the way out to the side, but you know hardly anyone has that kind of rotation in their hips. So when I say side, what I really mean is you make a V out of your feet, and that V, if you just go back and forth like this, that V is your natural turnout. We're gonna stop where your natural turnout is. Then you rotate the glutes, pull up in the abs so that that bowl of that pelvis is level, and that is your first position. Our tone dues, tone do, I'm gonna turn a little bit. Tone do means to stretch, and I mean you stretch. <laughs> You're pulling that standing leg as much as you can, as opposed to what it looks like, which is just out and in. It isn't. It's a stretch ah, as hard as you can. And not only that, but the leg you're standing on pushes down so that you are as lifted as you possibly can be. So a lot more is going on than what it looks like. Tone do, your leg stays on the floor. Degage means to disengage and it just comes off a little bit. Here we go with tone do and degage. Done with all that thought process that is gonna really give us the change we're looking for. We're in first position. Now I want you to think about squeezing a hundred dollar bill in between your thighs. And even though your leg goes in and out, you're still having that squeeze. I'm gonna turn a little bit so you can see. So this is tondu. It stays on the floor, but that standing leg is so, so tall. Your hips are not moving. Nothing is moving except this hinge right here at the hip socket. Now let's go to degage. So now we've got to lift it off the floor a little bit. Your hips don't move at all. You're coming straight, straight to the front, straight, straight to the front. Another set, hip doesn't move on your standing leg. I'm gonna turn so you can see a little bit. Now hold it out there. Just go flex and point. Now you can see, right? that my leg is super turned out because I'm trying to make my thigh flat. If you're in parallel, you're just gonna bulk up that quad. So make sure you stay as turned out as possible, high on that standing leg, hold it there. This is called a PK, it's just down and up. Now your hips aren't moving at all. Nothing is moving except this hinge right here. Super tall ears over your shoulders. This is a PK, it means to pick. Great, put your feet together. Plie in first position. Everything comes over to relax your back. Now stretch your legs and roll it up. We're ready to go to the side, but I don't mean the side side, I mean the side that is your V. So it's like a diagonal on the V that you set up. Here we go, tone do. It's out. Now see this hip I'm standing on this leg? It's never going to drop toward the bar. You stay so tall on this leg. And that is called being on top of your leg in the ballet world. 
Okay, tummy is tight, let's lift it up. So here's where we start lifting some weights. If you can really stretch through that foot, because remember, tendu and dégagé are stretches, elongations, extensions. Stretching through the foot, it's only an inch off, a couple inches off, now hold it. Flex and pointed, turned out, so the toes are to the ceiling. And five, and six, there's eight more, like that. High on the standing hip, see, now you're starting to feel the standing leg right back. We want five and six, ready for the PKs. Here we go, nothing wiggles except the hinge of the hip. So in the dance world, the leg you're standing on, we call it the working leg, because you can feel how much work it's doing, right? The leg that's going up and down, the performing leg. It's just like lifting weights. And three, and two, everything in. Plie in your first position, come on down. Like stretch, and we roll up. Now the leg you are standing on, you know that's the one that got the most work, right? That's the one that's nearest to the bar. So we're gonna pick that leg up, make the number four, stretch, plie the standing leg, and just let that standing leg hip stretch out. You'll notice at the bar, we do a lot of contraction and strength, and we always follow it with a stretch. Here we go for the other side. Now get the tailbone down, tummy up, rotate the glutes, ears over the shoulders, all that stays. We're just going to tone you. Here comes the left side. So on your V, right? But this is going straight in front of you. What we're really thinking about is how far we can extend it out without your hips moving forward and back. It's just the hinge of the hip. Feels like nothing right now, but you know it's gonna feel like a lot in a little bit. Here comes the degage. Degage means to disengage. So you're disengaging that foot off the floor. It's straight in front of you. Thinking about the standing leg. Get high on that leg. Get on the ball of the foot, not the heel. Now hold it out there. It is turned out. And we go flex. Now if you can keep your arm out here, you'll be working the deltoids. The standing leg, get a little bit more on the ball of the foot. So you could releve if you want it. We want the weight not to be on the heel. Straight in front of you, tummy is up. Here comes those PKs. There's 16, 15, 14. Nothing is moving except this hinge right here. Tummy is up. Really rotate in the glutes, ears over the shoulders, high on the standing leg. Nothing is moving except that hinge. Put your feet in first position, plie, everything comes over, relax. Legs squeeze together as you roll up. We're gonna go to the side, but remember it's not the side, it's your diagonal. Here we go, high on that hip, high on that standing leg, tone do. Now on the tone do, we're seeing how far we can stretch that leg out without moving the standing leg. It's an extension. Foot really reaches long. Tummy is up, tailbone is down. All right, here we go, dégagé. Here's where we start lifting the weight. And two. From that hip socket hinge, this hip doesn't move. The ears are over the shoulders. Those lower abs are tight, pressing tight, like Spanx. Hold it out there, here comes that flex and point. Now be careful not to turn this in. We want it to really stay in turnout with your toes straight up to the ceiling. Another set like that. Now get a little taller on your standing leg. I know it's starting, it's starting to burn, isn't it? All right, here we go. 16 PKs and it's 16, 15. Get off of your standing leg heel. There's only eight more. High on that standing leg. We're gonna stretch in a sack and three. Four more, this hip doesn't sink, and six, and seven, come on in. Plie in your first position, then drop it over. Feels so great. Both legs stretch, and we will roll up. Now the leg that we were standing on, that's the one that did so much work. So you just bring it up, put it in front. It's the number four stretch, and over. 
So your back is a little bit flat, right? We don't want to just hang. Bottom leg is in plie. And everything up. Let's take a deep breath in. And we are ready to move on to the back of the leg and the glutes. We're going to face your bar or your chair. Now, tummy up. And we just lift up into a releve in parallel. Bend your knees. We don't stick anything out. You're straight up and down. Here we go with a little press up and down. So the emphasis is on the up. Up, not all the way, but you're pushing into the floor. Your ankles are together. Another set. Now hold it right there. Here we go. Push down in the feet as you go up, up. Little pulses. Get the tailbone tummy up. And if you want to release the bar with one or two hands, always great to work on your balance. We're just getting a little bit into the legs. Now hold it right there. Without sticking your butt to the back, we just tuck under. Now what is that for? It is the gluteus maximus. Ears are over the shoulders and nothing else is going to move. There's four and three is just warming up those glutes. We never stick it behind you. Just come back to neutral. Now put your heels down, lift one knee up, start poking it back from there. Now we don't want to be moving your body like this, right? So put your hand on your tummy. Make sure nothing is moving in your torso. All the movement comes from the glutes. You are on a plie standing leg. We're doing four sets of eight. Now, when you first start out learning this um, particular sequence, you start feeling your hamstring right around now, right? But after a little while, you're gonna do more of these. That was four sets of eight. The leg that's behind you, put it in the front. Flex that foot, bend your back leg over. So, you know, you will um, acclimate to that pretty quickly. So in the future, we're gonna have to do eight sets of eight. Come on up. Once again, you are knee to knee. Now slowly up and down. I've seen people in bar classes do these like a crunch. We're not doing that. We just wanna move from the hip socket hinge. This hip doesn't move toward the chair at all. You're on a plie standing leg and that leg isn't wiggling. Here we go, 16, 16. 15, 14, ears over the shoulders, tummy tight. So we are so stable on that standing leg. Whew. Now this time, that knee is going to come in, up, turn it around to a number four stretch, all the way over. This time we are doing the performing leg first on this stretch. Up, other side, we'll bring it up, bend the standing leg and over. Ah, roll it up and we're ready for the other side. So let's, I'll switch my chair. We're going to do the whole thing again. Here we go, standing straight up and down. Now lift up without shifting. Get the tailbone down and tummy up. You're pressing the abs up, tailbone down. Feet are into the floor. Now push into the floor with the ball of the foot and that's what makes you come up a little bit. So we're not just bouncing down. We're pushing down in the ball of the foot hard in order to just come up that tiny bit, squeezing the thighs together, squeezing the knees together. Hold it right here. Now push down in the feet so that you go up, up. It's tiny. We're holding the abs tight. We're pulling the tailbone down. Your ears are over your shoulders. You are so extended in your spine. That's where the work is. Not so much in bouncing around your knees, right? Now hold it here. Don't go back, just go a little bit front. So we're tucking under as much as possible. Under, ankles are super close together. Put your hand on your glute. Now how tight can you get it? You're really like, Ugh! under. Great, put your heels down, knee to knee, not in front ever. Poke it straight back. Now we are so tall from the tailbone to the top of the head, but you are standing on a plie. Your knee is bent. That toe is poking straight back. In other words, don't think of going up, just straight back. Hand on the tummy to let you know 
that you are not moving your back, you're not moving your abs. It's all from the glutes. That's what we want, glutes and hamstring. Four more like that till we stretch, unless you just wanna keep going with this. So put the foot down in the front, flex it as you go over. So you will notice um, it's like a pattern with bar exercises. You contract a muscle and then you stretch it. And that's how it is for the whole time you're at the bar. Coming up, knee to knee, side and in. Now it's not gonna come up really super high because we are not moving our pelvis. I can get it so high if I tip, right? But we're not doing that. We want everything from the medial glute. Now hold it right there. I'll turn a little bit so you can see. Two and three, there's 16 of them and five and six. Now this knee is not moving around at all. You are staying super stable because remember, when we stay stable and build those stabilizers, we are building muscle and strength. We don't want to be wiggling all around. So there we go into the center. We're going to take the performing leg, bring it up in front. Now the standing leg is still in parallel, right? Arm can be out to the side if you want to stretch or in your hip. Just take a deep breath there. Other side, here we go. Just stretch that number four. Bottom leg is still parallel. Great, now let's stretch out the hamstrings a little bit more before we go on. We already did a port de bras in a turned out position. This is in parallel, so everything comes over. Now look, you're not putting your weight on your heels at all. Hands on the floor. Bend your knees a little bit. Straighten as you pull down more. Bend your knees a little bit. Straighten as you pull down more. Bend your knees a little bit. It's a little tiny plie. Straighten as you pull down more. Now tuck the tailbone under. Get the pelvic bowl back into its place of being level. And you roll up. Now you may have noticed how in the bar we have gone back and forth between turnout and parallel. Just working the glutes like that. So the last exercise was parallel. We're going to a turnout starting in your first position. These are leg swings. So we start with a tone due to the side. Remember, this side is not going to move at all. It's stretched and lengthened. This hip swings, turning the leg in and out. Here we go. In and out. Just a bit, little bit in and out. Now that standing leg, remember, we call that your working leg because it works so, so hard to stay lifted. Another set like that. Now, if you want to just stay doing leg swings without the plie, we can take the plie out of the next part. But if you want to do the plie, it feels pretty good. Depends on your knees. So the arm is going to mimic the leg. Here we go. So the arm crosses front into plie, front and plie. So we're now just swinging that crossover. If you don't want to do the plie, you could just be here. Lift and out. Two more. We're gonna to turn toward the chair into a parallel. Now, keep your back foot where it is. Come to a flat back there at the chair. And then change your lunge. Just holding there before we do the other side. Remember, we're gonna stretch, take it back. Back up to the center. Other side, here's your first position. We take out the swinging leg onto that V. Now remember when you're swinging, you're making a V. You're not really going to the side side. Here we go, standing tall on that standing leg. Two, there's 16 of these. So that standing hip, it's not moving. Ears are over the shoulders, abs are back. Shoulder blades are pulling down. So this swinging leg, it is like challenging the standing leg to be mm, agitating around and weak, right? 
So that standing leg, not moving at all, is what is building that strength. There's four more until we start our plie. Now I'll do it without the plie at first in case you don't want the plie. The arm mimics the leg to come up and out. So if you don't want the plie, just be here. If you like that plie, take it open. Depends on how your knees are feeling. Great, we're gonna stretch. So toward the bar into that lunge. Now step it back into a flat back. Come on up and press into the flat back. Release the bar and let's touch the floor. Now it won't be a lot yet, but then you bend your knees a little bit and then as you stretch, send your sit bones to the ceiling. And again, little bend in the knees. Think of pulling the head down, the crown of the head and the sit bones to the ceiling. One more time. Bend the knees and sit bones to the ceiling. Now you could bend your knees or keep them straight for your roll up. Take that deep breath in, tailbone is down, tummy is pressed in. We're ready to move on for more big glutes and standing leg strength. Now in future videos, when we get a little bit more advanced, we'll start these exercises also in turnout. But for today, I'm keeping this just in parallel. So we practiced this position a little bit already, right? It is a flat back. The hands are going to be on the bar. In other words, I would not like to see this. So you see this a lot in, in the gym and classes, but uh, if you must, then it's fine, of course. But if you can, what we're going for is length. Your wrists are on the bar, but you're not holding on for dear life. And in fact, if your fingertips are over the bar a little bit, you're pulling back not toward the bar, but pulling back away from it. Now in a chair, we can't really do that. Now, if you are not ready to be in this position during these parallel little arabesques to the back, I want you to just go to the wall like you may have done during our planks before. And at the wall, you can just do those exercises from the wall, but make sure you pitch forward a little bit because the leg is going to be behind you. I don't want you standing tall and lifting that leg up you need to be bent over a little bit. So maybe just at your bar here or against the wall on a diagonal. Anything that you feel your body needs, that's what you should do. Because if you get hurt, you're out of the game, right? And we want to stay in, healthy, and moving. So we are going to start with both knees bent. So you just get to a place that feels comfortable with both knees bent right leg goes back you're in parallel standing leg is in plie so we are going to really work on that strength and hip leg stability on the standing leg now hold it and start little tiny tiny pulses up tummy is still tight you're still on a bent knee plie on that standing leg. We're in a parallel arabesque back there. Hold it there, toe to the ceiling and 16. Now the tummy is up, the back is not moving. All the movement is from the glutes. We are gonna do a little hold here, so hold it right there. If you can, you take your knee and bend it a little bit and stretch it a little bit. Not all the way, just a little bit. Bottom leg bends and stretches just a little bit. Down. If you don't like this, please don't do it. Now that back leg is going to step through. Ah. <laughs> that is such a hard exercise, isn't it? So the leg that's in back of you now, that was the standing leg. And you know, that's the leg that got most of the work. So we're gonna stretch that leg out a little bit more. Coming in, we can come up to passe first or you just flip it over. We're back into that number four stretch, which is a very quick, 
easy, effective stretch. Ready for the other side? I'll turn. So again, here we go. We're finding your flat back, your shoulders down, hands just on the bar easily. Bend both knees. One leg stretches behind you. So you've got one bent leg, one straight leg. Now the tummy is super tight. The waist, it's like you have on a tight belt below your waist and you pulled it in a notch. Shoulder blades are down. Keep the plie on your standing leg. That top leg, super extended and straight. So remember when we did a degage and tendu, that was helping us develop the muscles to keep our legs straight and extended. Now hold it there, toe to the ceiling, 16. Don't let those ribs fall down. Don't let the tummy fall down. You are really using the whole front of the abs to press everything in. Now you're on a plie leg, right? We're gonna stay on that plie leg. We're not gonna straighten it all the way. Hold that top leg. Bend it a little bit, stretch it back up. Bend it a little bit, tummy is tight, shoulders are down, even though I know your mind is just on that standing leg. One more time. The leg behind you, take it to the front and stretch it, and here's where you're gonna feel the back of that leg. Leg behind you, that was the one doing most of the work, the working leg. So we're gonna bring it into your number four stretch. This is such a great stretch for the hips. Rolling it up. Now take a deep breath because you know when you work that hard, it's easy to hold your breath, right? Ah, we're going on to abs. We're moving on to abs, and you can, of course, get a mat if you like. We're going to start on our back, but I want to call your attention to your back right here. As we go down, we want to pretend like we have a grape right there, and we are going to squish that grape into the floor. So as we are here with both knees up, lift the shoulder blades off, hands behind, lift that leg up, flex it, turn it out. Now squeeze the grape into the floor as you go down. This is nice and slow. Down. Now squeeze that grape as you come up. So what are we doing here? We are lifting weights with our abs. Squeeze the grape down and when the leg comes up especially. And it's up. Elbows are to the side. Now you know you've got enough room under your chin for an apple or an orange. Now the key to really getting to the abs is in that squishing of the grape on your way up. There it is. Elbows are back. Slowly down. Keep the leg turned out. And again. All the way up. Put that foot pointed. Legs come into tabletop parallel. Now that grape is under the floor, right? That's what we're thinking about. Elbows are back. Legs stretch all the way out. Now stay right there, but both legs stretch. We're going to hold that stretch. Other side, hold that stretch. Leg just barely hovers off the floor on that bottom leg. And again, bottom leg bends. Here we go, turn that top leg out and lift. It's turned out with a flex foot. On the way up, you are really squeezing that grape. Elbows are back, enough room under your chin for your fists. Those lower abs are pressing down behind your waist. Squeeze in that grape. Another set. So these are little 
bot moths, little tiny slow bot moths. Let's do two more. Keep it turned out and lift one more. You're going to keep it turned out on the way up. But when you get there, point the foot, put it in parallel. And then we have 16, 15, 14. I'm not doing this with a twist today because I want you to just think about that grape that's under your waist that you're pushing down into the floor. Sometimes when we do the twist, we let go of that. And I don't want us to let go of that press. Now you're still breathing, right? The whole way through and extending one leg out like we did in the tone do, except now we are in parallel. Hold it right there. Let's stretch. Yes, you are still in parallel. It's a nice stretch, right? The other side. But because you're not touching that bottom leg to the floor, you need some abs. Both legs are super straight. Everything back up. Hug your knees right there into your chest. Both down. Now we're in parallel. One leg goes up, flex that foot so that you stretch the Achilles tendon and if possible, stretch the other leg long. Point the top foot. You're gonna feel that stretch along the shin and then flex it without the other leg moving around. Both knees down, the other side. So what is this stretching? It is stretching out the hamstring. Flex that top foot first, other leg long, and it doesn't move around. Point it, stretching out the ankle and the shin. One more time with that flex. Both knees bend into the chest, tucking your chin, rolling up, and just hit this position which is a cross-legged sit. So with both sit bones on the ground, we're gonna come over to the side and then diagonally. Oh my gosh, you know, we work our back so hard keeping our posture that this gives it just that stretch, unrotate it. That keeps your back safe. We want to be able to have a supple and really flexible rotation of the spine. Just a little bit of rotation there, stretching everything out. Open to the side and up. We did so much in the legs and hips. Let's take the legs out to the side and up. Now I want to show you something because a lot of people think that the object is to touch your floor, your head to the floor, but that is not it at all. We are super, super tall. Flex your feet so that the toes are to the ceiling. Then press the hands down and we just want to go over to a flat back as much as you can, keeping the toes up. They don't turn in. Inhale. Now, as you exhale, a little bit more flat. So the point is to stretch the inside of the thighs. And if you round your back and put your head to the floor, that is not going to happen. So we really want to increase the flexibility all around the pelvis and hips. You put your head on the floor. We're not working those muscles. We're not stretching the ones we need. So we easily just exhale, move your fingers just a few inches, staying as flat as you can in the back with your chest up. You should feel it in the inner thigh just as much as you want. Now it takes about 30 seconds to really have a stretch take hold, you know, to let it release. The muscle spindle releases after about 30 seconds. This is a great big giant stretch, I know. If you don't like it, um, sitting on the floor like this, you can always sit on a couple of pillows or a block and it becomes much more comfortable. So let's come on up, shake everything out. Knees are up. We're gonna just take it over into a little cannonball. Legs will stretch. Everything rolls up. Turn out into your first. Now you wanna make sure you get a lot of air right here. Inhale, exhale and open one more time. Get a lot of air, inhale, exhale and get taller. I hope you will subscribe to my channel and even give it a like if you liked this video. I'll see you next time. And remember, stand tall with your ears over your shoulders 
abs in and walk through your life with strength and grace. <laughs>